So about 20 years ago, me and my wife started out and we said, we're gonna break down these walls and we're gonna pull all these ages and these races in one building. And music and sound and our video has been a huge part of blurring those lines and getting all these peoples to come together. Now we have gotten to a place, when I started, it used to be if you wanted to build a church, build a building, fill it up and build a bigger building. Now the vast majority of the people that I speak to because of our AV equipment are outside of a roof, not inside of it. But for the millennials, we shifted about five years ago and said we're really gonna go hard after the millennials. And one of the things we thought we had to do was drastically change our look and make a great investment in that area. Not a little tweaking, but let people know we really meant what we said and go after this video friendly age of millennials that do everything by phone and consequently do church by, by phone. The first two quarters of this year, 76% of our new constituency were millennials. Uh, four to five years ago, that wouldn't have been even close. That number would have been probably less than 15. So a lot of the video investment that we've made and tried to become tech savvy to go after a new generation, we are just now beginning to see the real fruit and the real return on our investment. Our approach today is different than it was in the past. Everything that we did geared up to the main event. And that main event was our 30 minute television, our weekly broadcast. That was the main event. Now, I see that television broadcast as a net. And I'm casting that net out there and I'm trying to drive all of that traffic back to social media. We've got a Facebook live feed. We've got uh, the live iChurch that we have that you can watch and chat during the live services. We've got all the mobile apps. We've got on demand. We've got television. And we're probably reaching three to 400,000 people every week. How do we get people close to pastor? Um, how do we get 4,000 good camera shots? Uh, how do we translate on social media? And so all these things kind of work together as the choices of equipment and Panasonic had the solutions. We uh, started our media department in 1998 and uh, we started with 20 year old technology at the time and made it work. You know, I think everybody's kind of been there in the past, had to make something work. And as we evolved, uh, I think it was around 08, uh, we finally jumped into 720. And uh, so we were sitting here a decade later and going, well, we feel like we're behind the curve again. You know, most everybody's in 1080 and we're still doing 720. The only problem is I didn't want to spend the money on 1080 and then turn around and go back to my pastor in two years and go, okay, well, it looks like 4K is coming on the scene now and everybody's ready to do that. So we decided it would make sense just to jump and just going into 4K if we could. And so we needed to be able to make that move we got all excited about it because we started looking at stuff, figured out we had the funds to make it happen. Only one problem, none of the networks were accepting 4K. So we were sitting here going, wow, we're gonna buy a 4K product and then we have nothing we can do with it except for bump it back down. And so we contacted our friends at AE Global Media. Uh, they came in, they contacted Panasonic after learning everything that we were you know, experiencing and what our, our vision was, where we wanted to go. We have 13 cameras in the shoot. Some are small POV type cameras. We also found a lot of success with the Panasonic P2, which we put into play before, another workhorse of a camera because the reliability of what Panasonic brings to the table. But we needed something that was going to get the job done. So we had our two main cameras, our two handhelds, our jib, we needed something that was going to be a heavy duty camera uh, that would not only be lightweight as possible, but be a workhorse that would get us what we were looking for. And we found all of that in the UC3000s. But the cool thing about our cameras were is they do 1080 and 4K. So we were able to make the 1080 move. And now when we're ready to make the 4K move on television, we don't have to come back and spend the additional money. We just flip a switch. When we saw the 4K, when we saw Panasonic's new projectors, the lasers, we just fell in love with those things. And then when you coupled them with the new camera that would give us 1080 and, and, and 4K at the same time, it solved several problems and several issues in the, in the design. So in the design, having the live congregation be able to worship and have that intimacy 
uh, in a 4,000 seat room feeling like you're still, you're right there with pastor. He's a very intimate communicator. He likes it when you're close. And so bringing all these people close to pastor through video, it was a powerful tool. And uh, it was a great thing Panasonic did to be able to make, make these things integrate well. And it was a very easily integrated project as well. Uh, the RQ32s uh, that we uh, ended up getting from Panasonic are unbelievable. I mean, you can see everything. You can, you know, you look at some shirts and you can't see the design in the shirts. You can see the thread in a shirt looking at it through those, those cameras uh, into those projectors. It is just unbelievable. The HS6000 switcher, uh, when they brought it in and installed it, I mean, I was like, that's like looking down on New York City. I mean, what am I gonna do with all these buttons? You know, I mean, we basically go from camera one to two to five to four to seven, you know, back and forth. And so uh, when I got looking at the switcher, the key functionality on the switcher is excellent. Great keying on this switcher, but it's got the different MEs. And then it's got the aux out. So you got ME1, you got ME2, and then you got all of these aux out channels. And I'm sitting up here going, we're never gonna use all these outputs. But let me tell you, we're fastly filling them up. As far as I know, um, Redemption Church is the only church in America worshiping the way they are with com combinations of resolutions 4K. Having this live 4K worship experience, then broadcasting the social media, uh, broadcasting over the major networks and um, internet, it's the only one doing what it's doing. And there's one thing I'm absolutely sure of, partnerships are vital through companies like AE Global, and I think we can all count on Panasonic to step up to the plate. Whatever the future holds, they're gonna be there before we are. You can count on it. So we are a happy bunch of people here at Redemption because we think we've got something as good as anybody anywhere in the world is putting out and we're proud of it.